Hello and welcome to a very special Warhammer Wednesday. In this Wednesday's video, I will be reviewing the Demons of Nurgle Great Unclean One. This model will cost you £85. It's a huge amount of money. Um, it's the same price as the Primarch of the Death Guard, Mortarion, which I'll do a size comparison in a moment. He's a huge model. Uh, I've had to drop the camera down low just to fit his thickness in. Um, this is pretty much a thickness special. This model is so, so thick. You will find him in your Chaos Demons Codex, uh, the new one. He's not in the Death Guard Codex as a little character or anything like that. But this model, it comes with such a nice box, uh, a, a great instruction guide. You can build three versions of him. Uh, you can have about six different weapon options. You can change this flail to like a dagger. Uh, instead of the big uh, sword, you can have a bell. You, you've got three different um, heads. You can turn it into uh, a special character called Rotigus. Um, so it gives you lots and lots of options. Uh, you get these little nurglings. I think you get six nurglings. I said before, uh, this set really is you're buying sick nurglings and you're getting uh, a great and clean one with all the spare parts. Uh, not only that, uh, there are a couple of videos out there already uh, of people being able to magnetise both the heads and the uh, weapons. So there is that possibility if you wanted to uh, you know, make the most of the model and uh, all the different options for every kind of eventuality. Um, as I said before, I'm a builder and collector, uh, more than a, a gamer or a painter, so for me, uh, this model, I've, I've glued it all, um, had it in a static pose, and uh, if I was to get another one, uh, I probably would actually go for uh, the, the Rotigus model, because um, I really like that too. But yeah, how, uh, how much detail is on this model? Well, obviously you get a lot of detail with the, the Nurglings. This one, this kind of Nurgling champion with the sword and a cloak and armor and things is pretty cool. This one just hanging off the tentacles of the, the uh, Great Unclean one, uh, swinging this uh, incense uh, kind of ball or bomb or whatever it is. Um, that is uh, very reminiscent, shares a lot of aesthetics with, uh, with the rest of the Death Guard models actually, as well as the as well as the uh, models in the other uh, Nurgle range. Um, how easy was this one to build? Well, um, very easy. Uh, for £85, it doesn't really give you much of a challenge at all. It doesn't come in that many parts. It gives you lots of options. One thing I will say is you might get some gaps because these are big slabs of plastic. You might get some gaps in, in places. Uh, my best advice really is to use plenty of the plastic cement, uh, you know, the glue, plastic glue to, uh, you know, really make a good bond um, and really try and squeeze these parts together as firmly as possible. Um, and if that fails, as you can see, what I've done is I've put some liquid green stuff uh, in the joint and then once it's sprayed and washed, you're not really going to notice those gaps either. Um, also, there you get another little squished uh, Nurgle in there. Pretty cool. I'll just zoom in on him, if you can see him. Uh, yeah, great, great amount of detail there. Really, really impressed with this model, with the uh, with the detail. Um, I'm not sure whether it beats the uh, the Forge World uh, Great Unclean one, but you've got to remember, guys, that that one is £40 more. I did a little kind of unofficial kind of survey on my Instagram, and most people preferred the Forge World uh, one to, to this one. Uh, I think they both have their pluses and minuses. Um, I think with this one, it's great because you've got all those different weapon options. With the Forge World one, it is a name character uh, which is in the chaos index book from forge world um, and i suppose you could really use it as, as one like this if if you wanted to um, but they are a similar sort of size i wanted to get it and show you the size comparison but unfortunately uh sort of run out of time to do this review for that uh, comparison but uh but there you go lots of uh, detail lots going on um i do think it is worth the 85 pound uh definitely especially if you want a big kind of centerpiece to your nurgle army i'm looking forward to uh slanesh if they bring a uh, slanesh uh, demon out uh, slanesh is due for one you can get one at forge world at the moment uh, which is a good looking model but it's they are getting quite old now so hopefully that's not too far uh, around the corner let's do some size comparisons then so uh Comparing it to other models in the Nurgle range, this is a Plague Bearer. As you can see, it absolutely dwarfs, uh, you know, your normal like Plague Bearer. You can see one of these towering above the rest of your Nurgle forces and these bellowing charge orders to, to these uh, going forward. Next to the uh, Scrivener, which is actually quite a big model um, compared to like the uh, Plague Bearers. He is a bit taller and got more of a presence with that much larger base too. Um, I've got uh, Horticular Slimux here. 
um, which probably goes up to, I want to say, sort of the chin. Um, I mean, it's, it's not a thick model by any means, but it is quite a tall model because of the tree and the loppers and things. So that sort of gives you a comparison there. Moving on to Death Guard models, uh, I've got uh, my favourite looking model, the uh, Myfitic Blight Hauler. Um, you know, you can fit a couple of these Blight Haulers inside one of these greater... Uh, greater demons, great and clean ones. Blight Hauler is probably sort of a medium sized model, so it just goes to show you how much bigger uh, one of these is. And then finally, uh, the best sort of comparison I wanted to give you is one with Mortarion. Now, obviously, uh, Mortarion doesn't have nearly as much thickness as the great unclean one but it does trump him on height um you know with the wings and things uh, a lot of presence there but it just goes to show you just how small the body is of mortarian and it's not a small model anyway how small the body is compared to this this great unclean one probably show you a better sort of comparison this way uh, so there you go both models 85 pounds and i th just thought it would be relevant for me to show you these. Uh, the Great Unclean one isn't in the Death Guard Codex and obviously Mortarion isn't in the Chaos Demons Codex, uh, but uh, I thought I'd just show you this uh, this comparison there. Mortarion looks, you know, very thin next to this this Great Unclean one, but uh, I think any model does. Even Custodes uh, Aquilan Terminators look thin next <laughs> to this guy. Uh, he's definitely the thickest model. Um, uh, next to some Imperial models, uh, I've got uh, a Redemptor Dreadnought. He is bigger than a Redemptor Dreadnought, and Redemptor Dreadnought is pretty thick, uh, as you can see there. Um, so he's going to smash and batter into one of those, no problem. Um, and then next to a couple of uh, Space Marines, so you've got Space Marine and then you've got Primaris. Um, so yeah, he's going to dwarf, uh, dwarf those standard sort of troop types too. Um, the final little comparison isn't Imperial, but I just wanted to put it on here anyway, which is the tree, uh, the Feculent Narmor. The tree is, uh, you know, slightly smaller, but then again, it's not on a base. On a base, it would be a little bit taller, but then you've got the, the sword that um, adds to the, the height. Um, but the tree is actually smaller than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger than this. But uh, I, I'm looking around for bases on Games Workshop's website, and I think I will uh, invest and get a base for the for the tree as well. Even though it's it can't move, um, I think it would work uh, well uh, for this little army. Before I go, I just want to show you the uh, spare parts for this great unclean one. You do get a fair bit, unlike um, Mortarion, uh, where you don't really get many. Uh, look at how many you get, my lord. You get this, which is obviously part of the uh, sort of Cyclops uh, head. Um, this arm, load of detail there uh, for Rotigus if you choose to, to build that. And you get the, the staff. Um, unfortunately, staff isn't separate. So if you wanted to use that uh, as a tree or whatever, it's going to be hard to cut around the, the, the fist there. Um, you get the other sort of mouth part. You get the tongue with the, uh, the little head on somewhere. Yeah, there's the head. So you just put that, oh, this little demon head sort of through through there like so. You get part of the cloak thing for it, for Rotigus. Uh, you get um, three more Nurglings. Here they are. So you get six in total. You get the little champion with the sword, the one with the incense and the, the squished one. And you get these three. So you get this one just chilling out. Uh, you get this one that's uh, like a little bit of a Rotigus, which if I got a second one, I'd definitely use. Uh, and then you get this one with the mace. I mean, nothing stopping you from putting them all on the, the model, I suppose, if you really wanted to, um, or even on, on their own separate base. Uh, however, this one doesn't really have a back to him um, because he's meant to sort of fit on uh, the Great Unclean one itself. Um, you get another fist, part of the uh, bell, I think it is. Um, speaking of which, this is the bell. It's quite a big bell actually, uh, you know, compare that to a, a Space Marine, it is, yeah, well, with the, the hooks, it's it's taller than a Space Marine, so that's a big bell there. Uh, speaking of big things, here's the uh, bar blade, um, like a little uh, hook dagger with some skulls in. Um, then you get the mouth part for the sort of belly instead of the intestines. You get the uh, Cyclops head, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, and as you can see, you just put that on on there like so. Um, so I mean, that would be look, that look quite cool, like on a, on a wall maybe, or you know, on a door. That'd be pretty cool, a scenery piece. Um, part of a fist, 
part of the slimes for the hand that's uh, you know reaching out forwards for Rotigus. And there's Rotigus's uh, amazing uh, face with these. Uh, it's just uh, vomiting up uh, a load of maggots and things. And there's another hand too. So yeah, you do get a fair few parts. Uh, I do question the usability of them, other than the the nurglings. But I just thought I'd add this to the review to show you what you do get left over with this model. So now we're into my part of the review where I'll talk to you about all of the rules for the Great Unclean one. You'll find them in your brand new Chaos uh, Demons uh codex uh, for Warhammer 40,000. Obviously he's an Age of Sigmar model too and I'll be talking about those rules uh, after the 40k rules uh, and the Age of Sigmar rules do come in the instruction book that you get with the model so it's just another reason of hanging on to that instruction book because you get the the 40k rules and the Age of Sigmar rules. So we'll start off with the uh, Warhammer 40,000 rules. The Great Unclean one is uh, 17 power points. You'll find them in the HQ section uh, of the codex. They split the codex, I'll talk about it in the review, but they split the codex into uh, your normal HQ, troops, elites, and things like that. But they include all the factions within those, um, and I have some sort of strong feelings about that. But uh, the Great Unclean one in the HQ section, 17 power points. The points cost of the unit really depends on its loadout. Uh, the one there, which has the Bile Sword and the Plague Flail, is 325 points. It's a fair, fair amount of points for match play. Um, I'll go through its stat line. So its base stat line is uh, movement 7 inches, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength is 7, toughness 7, wounds of 18, attacks 5, leadership 10, and a save of 6+. plus. Obviously it's demonic, so we'll talk about the save later on. Unfortunately, as it's damaged, uh, some of its characteristics changes. Um, so if it's got it remaining, so if it's got remaining wounds of between 10 and 18, it's movement is seven inches, strength seven, attacks five. But if it's between five and nine wounds, then the movement drops to five inches, strength of six, and four attacks. And finally, when it's between one and four wounds, it moves a very sluggish three inches, hardly worth moving at all. Uh, strength five still, uh, and still three attacks. Now, it's a single model armed with a Plague Flail and Bile Sword, so that's its typical standard loadout. Uh, it's also attended by Nurglings that attack with their claws and teeth. Now, it's got a number of weapon options, and they're all pretty decent. I've gone for the Plague Flail because I really like it, but the Doomsday Bell is another very potent weapon that can also buff your army. I'll talk about those. So the Plague Flail, uh, which this one's equipped with, it's a range 7-inch uh, weapon, uh, Assault 3, Strength of user, which will be seven. Well, it depends on the amount of wounds. AP minus three, damage two. Now its abilities, it can be it can also be fired within one inch of enemy units and can target enemy units within one inch of friendly units. Excess damage from the weapon is also not lost and instead you keep allocating the damage to another model in the target unit until either all the damage has been allocated or the unit has been destroyed. So pretty decent. Uh, it reminds me of like the flail of uh, corruptions that the um, you know that the Blightlord Terminators have. The Bile Blade. It's a melee weapon. Strength user, so that'd be seven. Uh, AP minus three. Damage D three, and you can reroll fail wounds uh, for the weapon. So nothing amazing there. Bile Sword. Uh, again. This one, a bit better than a bar blade because it adds plus one for the strength and its damage is actually now D6. So you've got, a, you've got a chance of getting that D6 damage. And again, you can reroll fail wounds for the weapon. And finally, the Doomsday Bell, which has uh, an extra sort of ability. Um, it's a melee weapon. Again, adds one strength to the user. That's pretty cool. AP is a bit pants though. It's only minus one and the damage is only D3. The attendants, claws and teeth for the Nurgling side of the model. Uh, strength is only two, AP is nothing, and damage is only one. Uh, and each time the Nurgling fights, it can make D6 additional attacks with the weapon, and you can reroll wound rolls uh, for one of these attacks. So it gives you an extra little, you know, section of attacking. Um, the war gear options: it can replace its bile sword with a doomsday bell, and also it can replace its plague flail with a bile blade. So you've got lots of different options with these big, big weapons. So its abilities, it's got Demonic, Disgusting and Resilient, and Demonic Ritual. So Demonic just means it has a 5 plus Invulnerable. So you've got uh, Toughness 7 here with 18 wounds um, with a 5 plus Invuln. Disgusting and Resilient obviously means you can, uh, if every time it takes a wound um, on a 5 plus it, can, it doesn't lose the wound. And then Demonic Ritual 
basically instead of moving in the movement phase a chaos character uh, can attempt to summon the demon using the demonic ritual and if they do so you choose one of the four gods um, who owes the allegiance to one of the dark gods uh, so obviously a corn character can only summon corn demons you roll up to three dice and that's your summoning roll and you can summon one new unit with the demonic ritual ability to the battlefield that has a power rating equal to or less than the total result as long as it has the same chaos uh, god keyword so that's going to be pretty difficult with the, the power level of uh, sort of 17 for this one. Uh, if your summon roll included any doubles and then your character suffers a mortal wound. If it con contains any triples then it suffers a D3 mortal wounds. So there are, you know, negative uh, factors for, for summoning. Greater Demon. Friendly Nurgle Demon units within 6 inches of this model, when they take morale tests, uh, can use this model's leadership instead of their own. And that's pretty good because its leadership is 10. Putrid Offering. If you equip your Great Unclean one with a bar blade, it can use it to hook out a portion of its own rotting guts. So bar blade, not bar sword, but bar blade, uh, as an offering to Nurgle each time it attempts to manifest a psychic power. If it does so, a uh, Great Unclean one immediately suffers a mortal wound, which you may attempt to ignore um, through Disgustingly Resilient, before you take the psychic test, but you can then add one to the result. Crushing Bulk. Roll a d6 at the end of your charge phase if the model made a successful charge during that phase. And on a 4+, plus, so you've got a 50-50 chance, uh, you can select one enemy unit within one inch to suffer a mortal wound. And then finally, going back to the bell, you've got this ability called Reverberating Summons. If the Great Unclean One with the Doomsday Bell attempts to summon a unit of Nurgle Demons to the battlefield using the Demonic Ritual, you can roll four dice instead of three for the summoning roll. In addition, at the start of... Each of your turns you may roll a d6 for each Nurgle Demon unit within 7 inches of any friendly Great Unclean ones with a Doomsday Bell. And on a 4+, plus, a single stain model is returned to that unit. That's pretty cool that it can start, you know, returning those slain uh, models uh, to it. The Great Unclean one is a psych, I believe it or not, uh, and it can attempt to manifest two psychic powers in each friendly psychic phase and attempt to deny one psychic power in each enemy fight phase. It knows the smite psychic power and two psychic powers from the Nurgle Discipline, which are specific to this uh, you know, Chaos uh, Codex. Uh, on a D6 result, you've got uh, one between one and six. Number one is st Stream of Corruption, two is Fleshy Abundance, three is Nurgle's Rot, four is Shriveling Pox, Five is Virulent Blessing, and six is Miasma of Pestilence. I'll go through those psychic powers in the actual Codex review. If you want me to do a separate video of just the psychic powers for all of the uh, Chaos Demons, I'm more than happy to do a video. If you want to request that, just put it in the comments below. And the faction keywords, obviously it's Chaos, Nurgle, and Demon, and it's Character, Monster, Psyker, a great unclean one. So pretty horrific. Uh, it doesn't have many attacks with only the five. Um, its weapons do varying amounts of damage and uh, different APs. Obviously the best AP you've got there is a, is a minus three. It's quite strong with a strength seven. Uh, its toughness is only seven though, but the I think the character in the Index uh, 412 book is toughness nine. So, you know, bear that in mind. Yes, its ballistic skill is only three plus, but that's not too bad. Its weapon skill is great at two plus though. Um, it's got a lot of wounds, it's got its 5 plus invulnerable, and it's got the disgustingly resilient, and it's got a 50-50 chance of uh, you know, causing a, a mortal wound for the first time in combat. Personally, I would have thought it would have had an extra kind of ability. Uh, I've always thought these great unclean ones were sort of like a, the bringers of plagues and uh, diseases and all kinds of horrible things, and I would have thought it would have had a, like an aura of pestilence where anything within a three or six inch range slowly started to decay, and that would uh, be prevalent by reducing the toughness down by, by one, or something like that. That's what I would have liked to have seen uh, with this Great Unclean one, just to make it more of a, you know, sort of a character kind of thing, uh, rather than just a, you know, a bigger model with, with more wounds and, uh, you know, summoning buffs but there you go let me just go over the age of sigma rules i'm not into age of sigma at all uh but i think i'll just uh go through them anyway uh, for people that were that are interested um so it's got a movement of five inches uh 16 wounds save of four plus and bravery 10 uh, missile weapons it's got noxious bile um which is range seven inches d6 attacks three plus to hit 
Um, rend is minus two and damage one. Uh, the melee weapons, it's got uh, everything from the Plague Flail, the massive Bile Sword, the Bar Blade, the Doomsday Bell, and the host of Nurglings. The damage table, uh, the wounds allocated, uh, zero to three for Noxious Bile is two plus. Plague Flail is two plus, massive Bile Sword is three. And you've got everything from wounds allocated all the way up to 13 plus. Its abilities, it's got uh, Blubber and Bile, basically a bit like disgustingly resilient and also six plus in the combat phase the attacking unit suffers uh, one mortal wound, wound after all attacks have been made corpulent mass in the hero phase you can heal d3 wounds that have been allocated to this model see i'd like to see something like that added to this uh, mountain of loathsome flesh uh, you roll a dice for an enemy unit within one inches and they suffer d3 mortal wounds so a bit like the crushing bulk thing uh, putrid offering um pretty much the same uh, reverberating summon uh, that just so that just adds uh, three inches to a Nurgle unit that begins its movement phase within seven inches of the great unclean one command ability you've got grandfather's joy you can use this command ability in your hero phase and if you do you pick a friendly Nurgle demon unit within 21 inches of this model and you add one to the attacks characteristics of all melee weapons used by that unit until the next of your hero phase magic it is a wizard and can attempt to cast two spells in the hero phase and attempt to unbind two spells in the enemy hero phase. It knows Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield and Plague Wind spells. And Plague Wind has a casting value of seven and if successfully cast, you pick a point in the battlefield within 14 inches of the caster and draw an imaginary straight line between it and the closest part of the caster. Each unit, friend or foe, crossed by the center of the line suffers D3 mortal wounds. Units with the Nurgle keyword are instead invigorated by the Plague Wind. If it passes over them, you heal D3 wounds that have been allocated to this unit. So to me, that just seems like there's a lot more uh, uh, abilities and rules and uh, things like that for the, the Age of Sigma one. It just seems like it's a, a sort of better unit, um, you know, for, for that game. But uh, it might just be me reading it differently. Who knows? Uh, I thought I'd just uh, mention the Age of Sigma rules as well for those people that, that are interested. Um, that is the end of my review. Uh, what do you guys think of this model? Uh, do you still prefer the Forge World model um, over this one? Uh, do you think the rules for the 40k uh, are pretty decent? What are your thoughts? Please do put them in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Papa bless.